Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you today about October CMS, a new tool and content management system and how it can operate with no database. That's a pretty popular concept and there are a few CMSs that do this already, but none quite like October. The flat file approach quickly hits limitations with larger sites, so October optionally supports a database. For smaller sites though, this is an awesome new tool that I think you should find pretty interesting. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is create an empty public web directory somewhere, either in Apache or whatever your web server is, and then run this command in your console. And what this will do is it'll download all the October files um, that are ready to go straight away. So once that's finished, we can test that October is working and navigate to the web address. And this is the demo theme that comes with October. For our website, we should create a new theme. So we'll add a new directory in the themes folder here called website and then navigate to the config, which is under config CMS and change the config value active theme to the new theme that we've just created called website. So it's just the same name as the folder. So now when we hit the page, we see this generic page not found uh, system page. So what we want to do next is create a new pages folder inside our website theme and then inside there create a new file called index.htm. So you might be familiar with this type of template if you've seen static site generators. Uh, the configuration and markup are separated by the two equal signs here. Now at your web address you should see the hello world message instead. Setting up a page that's used when no other page can be found is just as easy. We just create another file here called 404.htm and the important part about this page is the 404 URL. So this is what will be shown when you try to open a non-existent web address. So you can see we're already set up in just a couple of minutes. Now go to the theme website directory again and create a new directory in here called layouts and inside there we'll create a new file called default.htm and this file is just going to contain the page scaffold so it'll have our HTML tags, the body tags and so on. We've also got a title and some style sheets here. The template system is Twig and you can see there are a few Twig variables used there. The main one to focus on is the page tag which will contain the page content. So open the index page and update the configuration section to indicate that this page should now use the layout called default which matches the file name that we used and we should also do that on the 404 page. Now when we hit the page in the browser you can see that the layout has been applied. Pretty simple stuff. Okay so what about these style sheets here? Create a new directory in the theme called assets. Now create a file called styles.css. Here we can paste the style sheet contents and then add a link to the style sheet back in the default layout. The theme twig filter makes it relative to the active theme. There's also an app filter which makes it relative to the application. There's also another handy feature where you can combine style sheets. So let's create a new asset file called font.css. We can then combine these two assets by passing an array of files instead. Now let's check the page source to see that the two files have now been combined. Most of the time you'll want to pass some data to the page. So in the index.htm page we'll include a PHP code section. To do that we include another separator and then we can define a method in here. From here we can assign a variable. Then in the markup we can reference that variable in Twig. Again, pretty simple stuff. You can include some opening and closing PHP tags if you want to activate syntax highlighting, but these are optional. Most of the time you will like to keep your PHP code separate from your view content and in these cases it is more common that we use components and the page will look something more like this. Don't be too concerned because this is another story for another time. For now we'll just keep it simple, all in one template. Now create a new directory in the website theme called partials. In here create a new file called footer.htm. Partials are basically the same thing as PHP includes. So we can include this on the default layout. You can pass variables to partials via the partial tag. This will make the variable available inside the partial markup. October has another type of include called content. 
Create a new directory in the theme called content. Then create a new file called welcome.md. This file contains markdown syntax because it uses the md file extension. The extensions htm or html and txt for text can also be used. Now let's create another page called about. In this page we can use the content tag to reference our new welcome content. When we open the web address to our new about page it shows the markdown content displayed as html. It's very common for pages to support parameters so change the configuration section to include a file name parameter in the URL. Now the about page web address will return 404 because it expects a file name. We can make the parameter optional by including a question mark at the end. The value of the parameter can be accessed in Twig by using the this param variable. We could even pass it to the content tag to make the content dynamic. Now the content is shown based on the value entered in the URL parameter. Of course, it would be a good idea to sanitize the value in the PHP code. This is done by using the this param again, except this time in PHP. We can also pass a default value as the second argument. Then we can pass the value back to Twig. The code section controls the page lifecycle. There are other methods too, like onInit and onEnd. If a value is returned from one of these methods, it is considered as a response. So if we return not found from our method, that will be sent directly to the browser. So now when we open our page without welcome as the file name, it returns not found. It might be a better idea to return a redirect instead, and we can do that with the redirect facade and say redirect to 404. Now I'll show you how to create some links Open the footer partial and we'll include some links in here. The twig filter called page accepts the file name as the value and outputs the page URL. So if we change the URL of the index page to something different, now the home page is gone, but at the same time, the link is preserved. See the footer link? Return home has now changed to the new URL that we specified. Linking can also support passing parameters. So on the about page, we can pass the file name parameter as anything we want. Now see the footer link? About us now includes the welcome parameter. October finds a nice balance between using a heavy system like WordPress, which you may not always need, versus creating a site in just HTML. All of the twig tags that we used can be found in the documentation by selecting Markup Guide. Be sure to watch some other screencasts that cover other modules such as creating backend interfaces and using the Ajax framework. So that's everything. Thanks for watching guys and grab yourself a copy and play around and see what you can do with it. It's definitely a platform that I certainly enjoy using myself and I'm sure you will too. So until next time, goodbye.